now I'm starting. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some people take have blooper reels. We just have blooper reels. <laughs> okay. I'm Judy from Artistic Artifacts, and I'm here with Barbara. Good morning. Good morning. Um, yes. <laughs> yes, it's a good morning. Um, we're here, and we're going to give a little bit of a focus on Bernina today. So I don't know about you, but have you been watching the 990 countdown? So all those people who have bought and reserved their 990 in advance, very lucky. They are going to, and you still have a couple days, if you would like to reserve your 990, mm -hmm. you, to be part of the VIP program and group, they, you still have a little bit of time because the machine is going to be unveiled at Bernina University on July 18th. So that's next Tuesday. June um, 18th. June 18th. Oh, yes. July. <laughs> Uh, bloopers again, um, June 18th. So I will be out there for that and it is going to be very exciting. And we are very excited about this machine. Marina has lots of other machines that fill many people's needs for sewing, but this is the top of the line 990 and it is, from what I, I've heard, all I just hear is superb, fantastic, very wonderful. Um, those are all the details I get. So, you know, I'm willing to jump for that. So you do can sign up for being a um, VIP member by putting a $1,000 deposit down and selecting Artistic Artifacts as your vendor, mm -hmm. um, local dealer. And then we will take care of receiving the machine, um, checking it out like we always do with all of ours. We pre-sew them in and then we um, deliver them to you. So. That is the most exciting news that we have at the moment. Mm -hmm. The next thing is in August 5th, getting the right date this time, if it kills me, um, <laughs> we have an opportunity, or actually you have the opportunity, to come join us to meet the new Bernina 990. We are going to have a Bernina educator here on a Monday, which those of you who know, Monday's normally a closed day, but we will have a Bernina educator here from one to four to introduce you to the new 990. And um, you can reserve your space for a nominal registration fee and it is online right now. And I'm sure Chris will put the link in there for us. And um, it will also give you free, the shopping in the store, it's closed, special discount, 20% off, and the ability to reserve your 990 if you have not done that already. So that's coming up. We also continue our summer solstice sales, which you will find out about what those are by being on our newsletter list. So if you are not on the newsletter list, then you're missing out on 25 off different categories through the end of June. So that's coming up. And we start our shop hop, the Mid-Atlantic shop hop on July 1st. It's July and August. So come and join us. There's a great slew of gifts and treasures and things to be won um, by completing your passport and receiving stamps from the stores that you go to. There's a Mid-Atlantic shop hop magazine that kind of gives you the gist of it and, and highlights some stores and ads and things like that. You can buy that from us online or buy it from here. So what we, I think that's all my really important announcements. So I'm going to just kind of focus on the 99, Bernina 990 at the moment. Um, so things kind of um, get it. So Barbara is going to talk to you about the Bernina number 18 foot and buttonholes mm -hmm. and some lots of other information yes. but first she has this beauty to show you so i have a little bit of shameless self-promotion here on july 27th i'll be teaching a class on this quilt the this quilt pattern came with your cafe 770 machine you received in the embroidery bundle five discs of cafe designs and this is one of those discs and if you would like to learn how to do this applique you will learn two methods of applique in the class and we will complete two blocks in the class. So look on our website under the web, um, workshops and events tab, 
and you'll find more detailed information. And if you have questions, just feel free to call the store and we'll be able to help you there. And again, that's on July 27th. And that's for 770K special edition owners. Right. So you have the ability to do that um, with the software. And this is using a module. So this is really cool. Yeah. It's like magic. It is, it is. It's, it's computer driven and it's a lot of fun and you don't, if it looks a little overwhelming to you, there's 42 blocks here. You can make a few less blocks, maybe make a table runner or a smaller centerpiece, anything that you would like. So um, look on the website and sign up for the class if you ha own this machine and are interested in learning how to do this. So now I'm going to head over to the CAFE 770 and give you a little talk and demonstration on the buttonhole and button sew on foot. And so pardon me if I use my notes here. I, as Judy knows, I'm very nervous and I forget half the information that I want to talk to you about and my brain goes numb. So I have to have some notes to follow along the, with the bouncing ball here. So the first foot that I'm going to talk about is the number 3A foot. It is an automatic buttonhole foot and how this works is you set up for the length of the button that you want and then this shank travels along the tracks of the buttonhole foot here and it makes the length that you have assigned to that button. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. This is one of the coolest feet that Bernina has um, and I'm not even a garment maker and I love this foot. So a little tip for you when putting this foot on the machine before you put it on the cone, run your needle through that and pull your, I'm sorry, my hand's in the way, pull the thread through now. It's much easier than trying to thread it after the foot is attached to the machine. So then we go onto the cone and just bring our um, arm down there and that's it. That's, that's the setup for that foot. So very easy, as all the Bernina feet are, very easy. So in the big book of stitches on page 58, there is an amazing chart of all the buttonholes. And the chart talks about each buttonhole, what it's good for, and what kind of fabrics are best for it. So um, look that up in your big book of stitches. And if you don't have that, you know that we have them for sale here at the store. Okay, so always before you put your buttonhole on your project, please test it out, use some scraps of fabric, Use the interfacing or the stabilizer that you're using on your project, the same one, and test out some buttonholes. You could tweak the buttonhole to get it just right for your project before you actually put it on your project. So this is how you do your buttonhole setup. We've attached the buttonhole foot to the machine, and now I'm going to tell the machine which foot that I have on there. And that's the 3A foot, so that's easy. So now it knows that I'm doing a buttonhole foot. And it changed its picture. And yeah, see how it, it shows you here that it has the buttonhole foot on. And I'm going to select the buttonhole icon. Oops, and then, let me get closer okay. here. Okay, so this yeah. is your buttonhole icon. And you can see here there's two pages here of different styles of buttonholes. We're just going to go with the first one. And then you want to set up the length of your buttonhole. And that is um, so that the buttonhole is long enough to pass your button through. We're going to go to the information menu. This is the coolest part. It is. This is the coolest part. And we are going to now see this circle here. We're going to make that the same size as this button. And I was cheating earlier. I played with it some. But by changing your knobs over here, that changes the diameter of the circle. And the machine will automatically add two millimeters. So here you could see that we've made the circle 25 millimeters, but it's going to sew a buttonhole 27 millimeters, and that gives you the extra width to pass the button through the hole to make it lay flat. So now we've got that all done. If you want to change the slit width, which is the width between the two bars, say you have a really thick button, you go in here again to the info screen, excuse me, and this is your slit width. And it, um, 6.6 millimeters is the default. So you can change that, and I've changed it here to eight millimeters just to show you how to change it. And then, so that will make it a little bit wider. So if you have a really thick button, like something maybe you're sewing on a wool coat and you have a tall button, you might want to change your slit width a little bit to give you some extra room to pass the button through the hole. And you're doing that with just these knobs. You're not, yeah. So. Right, just these <laughs> knobs will change that. So now I'm going to show you 
So we've got the, the length set up and the stitch width set up, and we're going to go ahead and give it a go here. So I'm going to pretend like I have a placement mark there because you always want to give yourself the placement mark. And I'm going to use the foot pedal. You could also use the green button. When you use the green button, this machine goes faster than you can even imagine. Um, you, and you can change that with a little bit of, of the slider here. But I'm going to use the foot pedal here. So, And what this does is it's starting with the bar tack across the top. And now, there we go. And it's telling me I don't have I'm any thread. thread. Oh, no. Sorry about that. <laughs> so what this machine does is it'll sew the um, left side bar first. And I'm not at a thread. I don't know what's happened here. I like the green button. I just change slow the feed down and do it that way. So this but this foot will come standard with your five and your seven and your new nine. Um, I think that it actually does come with a four as well. So when you have the three series machines, it is more of a manual button. When you get into the fours and up, you will have a automated button, which is what we have here. <clears throat> Let's see if, if we're going to have some action here this time. Let's make it go a little bit faster. There we go. So it makes the left side bar first, and then it's going to back up and make the right side bar both the bars coming forward. And that's important um, because if you do one, one bar coming towards you and one bar going backwards away from you, Sometimes you get a little change of one side might look shiny and one side might look matte. So see here it's going backwards and now it's going to come forward again to make the other side. And that's a really nice feature that Bernina has to make your buttonholes look really professional and even. Now, I know watching a machine sew is like watching paint dry. <laughs> so we're just about done here. I use my scissors here. And you watch the foot. It's going to pop out see, because it had gone down the track here. So now you have this beautiful buttonhole to fit your button. And if you are unsure about opening your slit here, and you've used scissors or the steam, seam ripper in the past, and you've successfully cut some of your buttonhole stitches, you don't have to worry about that anymore because Bernina has this great... Um, buttonhole cutter. It's a little chisel and block and it really does a nice job. So this chisel has a very sharp blade at the end but it's beveled here on the sides so it doesn't catch your sides, your bars on the sides. So when you're cutting your buttonhole open you don't have to worry about getting those side stitches. So I'm going to move over here to my... <laughs> Chris says she might try a buttonhole now. Okay and then you just give it a little pressure and a little rocking motion and you could feel it cut right through there. I so wish I had one of these when I was in school. All right. So that should be, there you go. So your oh. buttonhole is open. So now at this point in time, you want to, you've got it open. You want to mark, take your tailor's chalk, what, whatever you have, or your marking pen, and mark through here onto your project where you want your button placement so that you get it exactly where it needs to go. So now we're going to switch feet here, and we're going to go to the... Um, button sew on foot, which is the number 18 foot. This is this month's special. And it um, is on sale for 25% off through the end of the month. And th there's a couple cool things about this foot. First of all, you could see the little black rubber shoe it has on, and that's for holding the button securely down so that it's not gonna slip slide around while you're trying to sew it on. And then it has this center pin here, which goes between the button holes. But what's really cool about that is it creates the thread shank. So if you have a taller, thicker button, you may need to raise that center pin a little bit. And I'm going to use the example again of maybe sewing a large button on a wool coat or something fleece where you have a thick fabric. So you just need to um, unscrew this and you could raise. Oh, yeah. So it shows that again. Loosen this Sorry. screw here and uh -huh. see it raises. I don't know if I'm yeah, holding no, it well I can enough. see it. So you can see that 
the center pin is now raised and then you would tighten it down and that will give you uh, I don't know if you could see so much on camera, but it's not laying flat on the fabric anymore. It's raised. So that gives you a taller button shank for mm -hmm. those thicker buttons and thicker fabrics that you might be using. So today we're just going to do a normal button. So we're going to put it back down. I'm going to put the foot on the machine and tell my machine which foot I'm going to be using. So that it is happy with me. And I have my um, nine millimeter, in this case, the nine millimeter wide um, stitch plate on because we're, of course, going to be doing zigzagging just like we did the buttonhole here. And if you have hover on your machine and you have it all the way to the top, the highest height, you're going to need to change that. It needs to either have no hover or the lower two millimeter hover. And I'm going to show you how to do that because I've had a couple questions recently on people um, not sure how to change their hover. So here's the, the gears. So go into your gears, which is your settings. You're going to choose the stitch icon. You're going to choose the helping hand icon. And you're going to choose the needle up and down icon. And this gives you your three hover positions. And you can see the animation is showing you. This is no hover. This is the two millimeter. And then this is the high hover. You do not want the high hover because you've got to keep your button still and stationary. So you want one of these other two. I like to use no hover at all. That's personal preference between those two, which one you want to choose. So now we've got our hover set and we can go back to sewing our button on. So I'm going to sew on this great big button and the, it's nice to have the freehand system for this. And if you haven't used your freehand system, please dig it out and use it immediately. It is really a game changer. You will love it and you will want to know why you never used it before. So commercial buttons generally have a four inch, four millimeter space between the holes. So the Bernina machine is programmed to automatically stitch four millimeters. I like to double check and do a couple of hand turns on the, on the hand wheel myself to make sure that the needle is going in the right position and that I have my button in the right position also. If you need to tweak it a little bit because your, your holes are not as four millimeter, you can use your, your knobs here to change the width of your zigzag so that you can get exactly where you want. So I'm going to just try, I'm going to do a couple of turns here and now it's going to go to the right hole. Well, it usually goes to the right hole. Let's see what we're doing. You're on buttonhole stitch. Oh, okay. See, I told you I get nervous with these things. So if we go to page two here, there's a stitch number 60 is the buttonhole. Oh my gosh, I didn't know so that. On. I just go to zigzag. <laughs> no, this is the buttonhole. So, okay. and see, it's changed here. So, so now, so now I have the right settings. Okay, cool. All right. All right. So let's try this again. One, two. Okay. And now it's going to go to the right side. Okay. So now we know the needle is going to go in the holds correctly and you're not going to crash your needle into your button and screw up your timing. So it automatically sews this on. It does the tie on and the tie off automatically for you. You do not have to worry about burying your threads anywhere. And it stops when it's done. If you think that you need another round to secure that button, just press your foot pedal or your green button again, and it will go through one more round to give you a little extra security on that button. So now when you're finished here, all you do, I, um, I'm going to do my scissors here to and the presser foot will, and then just gently pull it forward and you have your button all sewed on for you. And I just have a couple of other examples here of buttons sewed on. Um, if you're using a four hole button, you would sew the button holds closest to you first and then do the rear ones. If you wanna get a little decorative, I did a little plus sign. So you have to rotate your project a little bit and you could do a plus sign. You could do the little um, arrow if you want. Um, to give it a little bit of decorative stitching however you want. These guys are handmade buttons. We sell them here in the store. You have to get the needle in the right position here. You have to play a little bit with the width of your zigzag to get them because they are not made to the commercial standard of four millimeter wide holes. So that is how you sew your buttons and your buttonholes. I hope that helps you. I have a couple of exam quilting examples because Judy and I both are more quilters than garment makers. So I'm going to show you a couple things that we've done with buttons on our quilts just to inspire you.
Well, you have a lot of people saying, ah, I might try buttons now. So this is a wall hanging that Judy did, and look at the buttons on this. Look how they accent this pattern just beautifully. And you can sew all those buttons on with your button sew-on foot now. You don't have to do it by hand. Yep. All right. Yep. And then I was doing a quilt with my leftover cave scraps from that applique quilt you saw earlier. I had a bag full of them. So I made this quilt and I used my buttons down the sashing to give it just a little bit of extra pizzazz to go with all the colorful blocks. So just some fun things, a little bit of inspiration for you on what to do with buttons besides sewing them down your shirt placket. They look great. All right, anybody have any questions? Can I help you with anything? Did I make sense? You made so lots of sense. <laughs> um, yep, a couple of people said, oh, I'm going to pull my foot out, Julie. Chris said that they did. And please pull your freehand system out if you haven't tried it yes. yet either, because that is a great tool on all your sewing, your quilting, your garment making. doesn't matter what kind of sewing you do. The freehand system is really a great game changer. So be sure to try that out too. So, well, let me show you what she says when she's talking about freehand system. So this, talk a little bit about that, Barbara, because I agree with you. I don't think lots of people take so, it out. So this little bar here is a knee lift bar. So you just use your right knee to raise and lower your presser foot automatically. And it's free hands because this way you can keep your hands on your project. You might have your quilt positioned just so, or maybe you're so doing um, collar or cuffs and you're really into the little details and you don't want to move your hands. You use that freehand system to raise your presser foot and rotate your project a little bit or get it placed just perfectly and then release it and your foot will go back down and you can continue on with your project. And it is just a game changer when you're sewing. Yeah, so absolutely. please give it a try. I have a lot of customers that say, oh no, I don't ever use that. Please try take it. my word for it, try it. <laughs> yep, yep. All right, it doesn't look like we have any other, lots of hearts, lots of oh my's, lots of uh, you look great this morning. <laughs> I think we're good. Well, so. thanks everybody for tuning in this morning and we will be back next week with another informational live. So we'll see you then. Have Bye. a great day.